Hey folks, it's James, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how one of the greatest advantages of drawing by hand, the ability to suggest detail with just a few strokes, can be combined with the power of iPad drawing to make the seemingly old-fashioned act of designing with a pencil in hand relevant again in the modern digital office. So grab your iPad, download the original Procreate file you're about to see, and join me as I walk you through how our office used iPad sketches to tackle a high-stakes challenge, all for a Hollywood client in a high-pressure, real-world scenario. So this is a job we did for a major Hollywood studio. They wanted us to help invent a chain of virtual reality theaters that can be installed in typical mall spaces. As far as what the design looked like, we were asked to design a space that evoked a sense of mystery and wonder and exploration. So we looked at famous museums and the personal libraries of some famous explorers and vintage movie posters anything that would give a sense of excitement. Then we put it all together and came up with a lobby for buying tickets, a pre-show and after-show lounge where you could get a bite to eat and a beverage, and a retail gift shop so you could buy a souvenir and share your experience with friends and family. Like most of my jobs, the trick was to generate a concept quickly, win the approval of the client, then hand it off to the staff to do design development in Rhino or Revit. In other words, we wanted to sell the client on the idea, but not get bogged down in details. So when you look closely at the drawings, the detail is really just a bunch of impressionistic gestures that suggest the content, but don't represent it photorealistically. This is the great advantage of hand-drawn sketches and Procreate in specific, because you don't have to draw every single detail, you can just suggest it. So here we go. Step one was to import the basic view made in Rhino. Step two was to add this very crude sketch on Trace that we had made in a meeting prior to starting to design this thing, indicating the content and all the major pieces we wanted to be sure to have in the room. The first step after this was to redraw those pieces in a better perspective, so the eye of the observer would be engaged more in the drawing. I'm using the Narinda pencil for this to give the line work a very sketchy look, almost like a regular pencil. I also began to add things like beams in the ceiling, or extra pieces of furniture, like this bar cart in the back, things that would make the plan work better. I'm trying to create a variety of textures using big things, small things, to keep the eye moving around, keep the composition interesting, but always with an eye toward how the space will actually be used. So here again, more stuff on the walls. Now the beams uh, weren't quite what we wanted at first, so I'm gonna add more of a traditional beam ceiling. Once the pencil sketch is far enough along, I'm going to use the flat brush to start adding tone. For me, applying shade and shadow is what lets me start to see the potential of the sketch, kind of pushing and pulling the different parts of the design. It also really helps me imagine the lighting, which we'll show more about in a second. So here I drop another semi-transparent layer of white over the sketch and then do some design development in red on a new layer. This is a technique you've seen me use all the time on my real world jobs where I'm essentially using a new layer of white uh, just like you'd use tracing paper back in the day. I wanna use the kind of shells you might see in a laboratory or a scientist's office. So I use the grid brush to draw a piece of a grid and then I transform that piece on a new layer into the proper perspective. Now you've heard me say this a hundred times, but I can't stress how true it is that you really want to learn to be impressionistic and suggestive with these details, at least when you're doing this kind of conceptual design sketch, because um, all that matters is that the sketch be in perspective and the human mind and the observer's eye will do the rest of the work for you, filling in the details. When I get to the end of uh, a design change or a design modification like this, I'll throw in a layer of opaque white behind the part that I've changed so I can visualize that better, eliminate the confusing background, and uh, eventually I can turn this red part of the sketch, I can desaturate it and turn it into black and white like the rest of the sketch. So it's a great way of keeping things straight. Another strategy I'll use while developing these concept designs is to keep the colors very limited, uh, maybe only to one or two colors that emphasize one particular feature of the design. And in this case, I'm referring back to one of our inspiration images, one of these museum images where, whether true or not, it seems like very often these display cases have kind of a beautiful blue glow to them. 
and that the little objects are placed in front of that glowing blue. So we, we went for this effect here, and it was really um, a simple case of creating a new layer, filling it with blue, and then beginning to erase away the kind of accent lighting or the, the main points of light that you would see in a, in a normal museum experience. Another trick I find myself constantly using, and I don't have a specific example here, but you can see all this tone I'm putting in. It's usually on one layer when I'm working very quickly, but I can duplicate that layer at any time to give, give it much more punch. And that has saved me so much time over the years, I can't tell you. So another great thing about layers, because if this was watercolor or pencil, it would be very difficult to do that same thing as quickly but um, another fantastic reason for using Procreate. Now at the very edge of the drawing where it's closest to the viewer, I'm trying to throw in a little more specific detail because that will also serve to trick the eye into thinking that all the detail is a little more specific. At this point in the drawing, I want to look a little bit more at the lighting effect I'm after. It's a, an effect of kind of romantic backlighting with moments of brightness. So I darken that overhead bulkhead, the top part of that shelf, and I'm using the uh, airbrush, the soft brush, to just stroke in some white. And I'm not being very careful about it. I'm just trying to make areas glow. I don't care if it goes a little bit over some of the things in the foreground. Uh, I can always darken them later to get that backlit effect. But in general, I'm punching up the lighting and the details, and this is the part of the drawing where I really begin to get excited. I can see the drawing, I can imagine where I'm gonna put more emphasis, where I'm gonna make it more dramatic in terms of darks and lights, and it's a great feeling. And um, it makes adding the detail uh, all the more fun because really the bulk of the work has been done now, and every new detail just adds that much more zing to the drawing. And the difference between drawing this way and designing this way and designing the way I used to on using watercolor on paper or using pencil on paper, I can't tell you how liberated I feel having layers at my disposal and being able to individually go back in and delete layers or adjust layers or duplicate layers. It's just so much more powerful than old school analog drawing was and it really has made all the difference in my my career. To dive deeper into any of the techniques you've seen in today's video, be sure to check out the links to my online courses and Procreate Digital Tools in the description below. To see the next video in this series, click here and I'll see you in the next video.